Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, um, May 21st. Uh, I'm saying uh, welcome back after a very, 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 very hectic week I had at my real job. Um, now that that's over with, I get to breathe a little bit and relax. And, ah, now, I, that's, now it's not so stressful. Now I feel good again. All right. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about something that's kind of tying into the Kickstarter that I'm planning to do in January, and it's more on style and feel than anything. So, as of late, I've been getting very much more and more interested in the whole transhuman movement. Now, that doesn't mean I'm looking to get myself a whole new body, into the, but I am like, I like the concepts they've come up with. Some of those concepts I think would be very, very interesting, and even more so, I'm thinking about incorporating some of the ideas and concepts that are basically... I guess the cornerstone of transhumanist ideas and putting them in a fantasy setting. I think I've kind of already kind of done that by accident by, you know, the invention of the Kaga. It's an organic computer. And that's something, you know, I thought about saying, hey, how would I like to do that? And this is how I'd go about doing it. And this is how we got the Kaga. And, you know, it's, it's fantasy, but it's definitely sci-fi. It's definitely a sci-fi bent to it. So now I'm looking at other ideas and concepts of, you know, you know, even things as simple as a, as, as a singularity. And in this sense, the singularity for people who don't know are not big transhumanist, um, I guess it's transhumanist knowers, knowledges, I, whatever you'd call them. The singularity for transhumanism is where computers and man basically become intertwined with each other. It's a point where, you know, the best description I always go with is that your body's like a set of clothing. You can change bodies as easy as you change your clothing. You know, and that's you know, and at that point, are you even human anymore? Or are you not human? I mean, the philosophical discussions can go on for a lifetime. I think some of them are just really kind of interesting. And on top of that, the cool ideas that you can do, I mean, gaming-wise. I mean, here's, here's a thought. This is one thing I've been kicking around for a while. Not for this Kickstarter, but some ideas in general. What if you had a person who wanted to say, hey, I'm going to leave my body and I'm going to it a golem? And that's very, very typical. I can see that happening. That's not a big surprise. But then you get to the point of this person doesn't actually have a body at all. He has several bodies. And he body leaps and leaps and leaps to these new bodies to do whatever he needs to do in these bodies. You know, and at what point, at what point do you start becoming, do you stop becoming human? And, you know, are, are you human because you're biological? Are you human because of your thought process? I mean, the ideas and concepts can work in any genre, and you just, and you, you just plug them accordingly. Because, I mean, a robot in a fantasy setting is a golem. I mean, let's just be blunt about it. You know, iron golems, robots. They may not look like robots. They might have clockwork parts and stuff like that. But really, it's, it's, it's their version of a robot. Automaton, if you want to be exact. And I think that kind of mindset can make some really cool ideas come through. And with transhumanism, you know, let's let's think of ourselves totally different. Let's think of ourselves and how we can build ourselves differently. I think that can make a lot of cool adventures, give you a different spin on villains. Because, I mean, typical, you know, the big raiding party villain, he's taking over some lands, he's going to raise some undead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are pretty standard, basic ideas and concepts. But what if you got a guy who just, he doesn't want to die, but doesn't want to become a lich? That wants to become something more than that. How about that? How about, you know, my personal favorite. I think diseases and viruses are where you're going to see the, the biggest change in science. I think I think uh, medicine itself is going to become more personal. It's going to be very much of this medicine was made specifically for you. This disease specifically affects you in this kind of certain way. I think that's the next step. And I, I think in fantasy we don't we just go to disease generic boom go with it. One of my one of my kind of I, I'd say ideas I've been running with for years is that I always think it's odd that certain races or classes get immunity to disease. And those guys, they never worry. It's like, disease? No big deal. I'll walk through a plague. Not a big deal. My concept was, well, you're immune to disease. No problem. Got no problem with that. You can't catch it. But what if, it made, what if that disease knew that you were immune and turned you into a carrier of it? And even worse... What if it knew you were, you know, immune to it? It then changed itself to some a different type of disease than initially what it was due to that immunity. 
And here's an even crazier idea on top of that. Same disease, same makes a change in the middle. Suppose this disease decides to affect you unlike you would be typically affected by disease. What if this disease to you acts like a curse? And this is talking Pathfinder, so wondering what said, of course. But, you know, what if this disease affected you like a curse? Well, your mini disease doesn't really, you know, you're immune to the disease, so you won't catch the disease. But this thing is now, for you, it's a curse. It's something totally different. And I think that's kind of how you've got to look at diseases. I, I think that diseases themselves, people are like, oh, it's no big deal, da, da, da. I think bringing terror back to diseases is, to me, to me, is something that I like. I mean, let's just be, let's be bluntly honest. There's a lot of scary diseases out there. I mean, forget the typical, you know, AIDS and things like that. Those are, those are horrific diseases. Don't get me wrong. But like, there's a book that I read years and years ago. It's one of my favorite disease books. If you want to, if you want to get freaked out, read this book. It's called Hot Zone. They talk about, you know, Ebola, Zaire, you know, the Hunter virus, and all these like just horrible, horrible, horrible diseases. And, you know, it always ends up with the same concept. You're going to be bleeding from every orifice. And that never sounds good, no matter how you cover it. I mean, the term bleeding from every orifice cannot get good. That's, I mean, that's a bad statement. It's a bad statement when you hear it. It's a bad statement when you see it. You know, those are bad statements. And I think, you know, those are horrible. You know, your inside turns to the equivalent of jello. That's not a good thing. That's, that's, that's not a good thing. You know, and I, I, and I, like, I like those kind of diseases, but they're terrifying. I I've always thought diseases in fantasy settings have been very, very, you know, tame as they were. You know, someone gets a disease, oh, it's just a disease, I'll be okay. Oh, the, the. You know, what if a disease was smart? What if a disease was a thinking disease? What if this disease said, when you try to cure me, it's not going to work the typical ways. If you try the typical ways with me, I'm going to do something back to you that you wouldn't suspect. I think those kind of things are interesting, you know. Oh, I go, ah, oh, just remove disease, no big deal. Well, it triggers something else, and this happens to you. Like, well, what would, well, what would I do? I don't know. Um, trigger disease, you know, disease goes off, you get infected. Someone says, okay, remove disease, cure, cure disease. It then causes your body to start burning. You start burning from the inside out, and that lasts for, let's say, D4, D6 rounds. And you take, um, how much damage did I give you that? You take, oh, I got a good one. You take your constitution modifier, positive or negative, in points of damage to your con. So if you got a plus three constitution, you're taking three points to your con every X amount of rounds. So you could easily burn from, burn and die from this thing. You know, I want there to be. I want people to think about diseases in ways that actually terrify them. I want to bring the terror back to role playing because I think this comes to a point, and I've said this before. People have this very much blase. I say blase. Yeah, blase blah feel of oh, I'm incredibly tough. I'm durable. I have nothing to worry about. Nothing can touch me. And I think you've got to start thinking about different ways to cause damage. I mean, John Wick was right. There, there are great ways to cause damage to people that have nothing to do with the combat that side of it. And I think there's great ways to do that. I, I personally have always believed diseases are a great way to do that. You know, you give somebody a, a disease that's, you know, not killing, but can impact and incapacitate them for a while. I mean, something that, you know, slows them down for, you know, it, it takes that, I was Hercules, and now I'm not so Hercules. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not as strong as I used to be. I'm not as tough as I used to be. I can't take as much damage as I used to be. I think those are ways of humbling um, characters when they play, so they play differently. Um, I was talking to uh, Christina Stiles this week about um, ideas for this Kickstarter, and I brought up a name that I've said, I know I've said this post several times, I've said, I've said it in my blog, Warren Ellis. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Warren Ellis' writing, and I'm going to put this in really odd context. I think Warren Ellis comes up with some of the most interesting concepts and ideas I have ever seen. The guy really understands how to write interesting things very, very well. Things that are very, very science-focused very, very well. He also, I believe, I, I'm pretty sure, 100%, he's a transhumanist, and he brings a lot of those ideas into his writing, which is always fascinating to me. And, I mean, Warren Ellis is definitely definitely a different kind of writer, which is kind of cool. 
And not everybody's read his stuff. I mean, a lot of people, if you're, if you're not a big comic book fan or haven't read any of his fiction, it's, it's usually the traditional route of, oh, I've read his comic books now, oh, he's doing fiction books, and I read his fiction, and that's it. And he's a really, really interesting writer. I mean, my two favorite books he's ever done was Planetary and Authority. Authority, the first 12 issues, are really kind of, I would say, that, re, that redefined the genre of comics for the modern age. It's in, in the widescreen format, as he describes, you know, that's the big thing that's come out of his creation. And he's just done a lot of cool ideas, another, you know, cool ideas that you could use and that would work very well and definitely work very well in a, in a gaming setting. And I just think there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, lots of cool stuff that can be, it can be mined for. So I'm telling Christina about this, and Christina had never read his stuff, so I was like, okay, let me send you a bunch of stuff to her. So I sent her Planetary and Authority. And Planetary, to me, the concept, you know, archaeologists who are basically digging through our cultural, I say, yeah, I say a cultural past of stories and tales. I mean, if you've never read Planetary, and if you've never read Planetary and you're not a comic book fan, it's even a better book for you to read. Because it talks about all kinds of genres, and they basically examine the genres and explain and kind of explain to you why they were cool. And some of the some of the stories are great. Some of the stuff is just out and out great. Um, issue number one is pretty much a whole pulp issue. It's amazingly, amazing dumb. Issue number two, Godzilla, giant monsters, boom. Issue number three, which is personally my favorite of, of my of visually my favorite, is about um, <laughs> the Hong Kong action theater and ghosts. Uh, what's issue number four? I can't remember what issue number four is. I can't, I, for some reason I can't see the cover. Issue number five was the Captain Marvel one? I believe so. And issue number six was um, basically the, their introduction of the Fantastic Four. And the series is just so well done. And it's so, just a smart, smart series. I'm, I'm always impressed by that. So if you've never picked it up, pick up Planetary. Pick up all four. They'll come in four trade paperbacks. Four trade paperbacks. They are interesting, they are amazing, and there are some good ideas you can strip mine out of there. I know, you know, some of them are just really, 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 really cool ideas. So, do yourself a favor, check it out. Um, and like I said, I was talking to, I've only been 12 and a half minutes, wow. I was talking to Christina Styles about this, and I'm getting her, you know, getting her involved in, this is the kind of stuff I want to do, that even um, one else's global frequency that kind of stuff. I want to do the different kind of fantasy adventure. I want people to say, when they're done playing this adventure, for, well, a couple of things. One, I want them to be terrified of the bad guys. If your guys are going to come in and think, we're going to mow down these guys like, you know, straw or grass. I want you to be terrified of bad guys again, number one. Number two, I want to take things that you haven't seen in fantasy ever and make it cool. And, you know, the ideas I have planned for this, they're pretty solid. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. So I think they're going to be cool. I think they're going to translate very well. And I think a lot of people are going to see them to be something even more interesting than that, than what they might generally think. I think they're going to be terrified, which I guess is a good thing. All right. Let me finish this up. Um, I have some projects that we're working on right now, the quick, the quick list. Um... Jeff Lee, I know, is working on our Cyrix project, which I haven't actually told him what a deadline is. Um, I'm actually going to talk to some artists for some new art, because I've, uh, I, I'm missing a couple pieces just for other projects. But everything looking pretty good and going pretty well. So, thank you for listening to me today. Good Lord, I'm just mumbling up my words today. That's what happens when you've had a long weekend, but in a good way. Now that it's over. So, probably I'll have some more for you tomorrow, if not sometime later on this week. And I guess I will talk to you all later. Have a good day.